now tuned into the greatest. The Run with Lenny Wilson Podcast. The, the Run with Lenny Wilson Podcast. The, 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 the best sports podcast there is. Yes, sir. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Run with me, Manny Wilson, all the way from Detroit to Chicago to your speakers and headphones. I appreciate you tuning in to the first interactive sports podcast, you know, a community that makes sure your voice is heard. So if you hear something you agree with, you disagree with, you like, you dislike, or even if you just want to outsmart me on something I said, go ahead, shoot me a call, 219-413-9405, and we will play your take back on our next episode now look the trade deadline was today all right so it was a lot of things going on in the nba and to me although there was a lot of moves and releases and all of these different functions that happen with all these different teams and maybe your favorite team or maybe your team is like the chicago bulls and they haven't made a trade deadline move in three years i think there was just three big trades that happened that are really going to make a difference to these couple of teams so out of first off let me inform you if you haven't been caught up on all the different things that's been going on with the trade deadline so first things first the milwaukee bucks they picked up patrick beverly from the 76ers in exchange from campaign and a second round draft pick now more the indiana pacers they traded for buddy hill or they traded buddy hill to the 76ers in return for marcus morris and three second round picks and the Dallas Mavericks, they got rid of Grant Williams, Seth Curry, and a first-round pick for the Charlotte Hornets small forward, P.J. Washington. Now, there's a lot more that happened, obviously, but these are really just trades that are actually impactful and trades that will make a difference. But to break down each one, starting off with the Milwaukee Bucks here, because the Bronx, the Bucks front office, bro, they've been doing their job. Like if, if the Bucks fail this season, if they don't win a championship, it's definitely not on the front office because the front office of the Milwaukee Bucks has given them the best chance to win a championship that any player could possibly ask for. The way they stacked this team and rearranged this team personnel-wise from an on-court perspective has been absolutely amazing. I mean, they, they added Dame. They still put it, got a, a good mix of veteran presence, got a good mix of some young guys as well who still learn it. They're a very lanky team. Like, And then you just add Patrick Beverly, who's a defender, who's also a veteran, who's going to be a great presence in that locker room. Bro, that, that's a huge win for the Milwaukee Bucks, man. And I think ultimately... Them landing Patrick Beverly here gives them every reason why, every, even more of a reason they should win a championship. Because in the Eastern Conference, I know the Celtics have a stacked roster just on paper, and they've been all right uh, more in more recent times. But the Bucks, they don't have an excuse not to win because the team is stacked, bro. At this point, everybody's doing their job with the Milwaukee Bucks in the front office, even though I didn't like the Doc Rivers hire, but... It's, it's it's on the guys on the court, meaning everybody on the floor. Doc Rivers on the floor coaching, the players playing well and meshing well together and just figuring it out because, bro, they, they have the team to actually go get it done this season, and it looks great. So, I, I mean, the Bucks definitely got a, a little bit better than what they were, and to only lose campaign, who's not that big of a deal to lose, and gain a veteran like Patrick Beverly, absolutely amazing. I love this move here from the Milwaukee Bucks. Now, Another move by the 76ers, I thought this was probably one of the most impressive deals that I've seen over the deadline just because it's going to be very impactful. Now, the Pacers, they traded Buddy Heald um, to the 76ers in return for Marcus Morris and three second round picks. Now, I think the 76ers really finesse them boys when you talk about trade deals and what actually happened because you're pairing up Therese Maxey. Joel Embiid when he comes back from injury, and then you add another offensive offensive power like Buddy Hill, who can really like tear up the scoring toll on the offensive end. So I, I'm loving this move that they picked up Buddy Hill. But the reason I say they got finesse is because Marcus Morris is on the back end of his career. I um, mean, you got three second round picks, so it's like it's, you're not really getting anything great. And I think Buddy Hill is is definitely. A lot more valuable than than Marcus Morris in three second round picks. So maybe it was a cap space type of move. Maybe it was a move like, okay, we know we're not going to resign Buddy Hill in the next few years. So maybe that's why we, you know, we're going to get rid of him and, and free up some cap space to possibly bring in another name in the next year or two. So I don't know what the Pacers deal was with that, but I know ultimately this helped the 76ers out a whole lot. I'll put it that.
that way. So I'm impressed by the 76ers, and I'm really looking forward to Therese Maxey getting some help on the offensive end with Buddy Hill being there, and, and even more seeing Buddy Hill, Joel Embiid, and Therese, Therese Maxey all play together when, when those guys are healthy. So kudos to them. Solid move there. And then for the third move that I think was a power move for this trade deadline was the Dallas Mavericks, man. Now, the Dallas Mavericks, they've been very, very meticulous about who they want and where they want this person and what type of skill set that this guy has and all of that. And and I've loved that they've been that way ever since the Kyrie Irving trade um, because a lot of people really, really assumed that they were going to fail with Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic, but... They've been, they've been making it look pretty good. And I think adding P.J. Washington like they did, getting rid of Grant Williams, Seth Curry, and a first-round pick for P.J. Washington was a solid move for the Dallas Mavericks. I think they've really been focused. They've, they've been sharp in terms of putting certain guys where they want them to be and assigning them particular roles. I've noticed that even when Grant Williams was there, like he wasn't seeing the floor a whole bunch, but I just noticed he was able to buy into his role a lot a lot quicker than when I see other guys do when they go to another team. Like it's, it's, it seems very organized over there in Dallas, if anything. So I'm loving this move from them. And also too having guys like Pete or having guys like Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving on your offense. I mean, you need someone like PJ Tucker who can make a corner three, who can hustle, who can jump, who's very athletic, who can slash at the same time, grab a couple rebounds. Like you need that cleanup guy who's going to help your stars ball out and make sure you can close out games so i'm loving this move here uh and i they had to give up a good amount but i think it's ultimately worth it just because they've been so particular about the things they've been doing so if i had to rank all of these teams here first i'm going with the 76ers for this trade because i think this will be the most impactful type of trade just because I mean, they, they've already had Maxi and B there, and they've needed some more help on the offensive end. But I think Buddy Hield is a guy who's going to be able to play both sides of the ball and ultimately will be able to help the 76ers succeed down the stretch in the playoffs. So I'm going to go impactful move. Right there with the 76ers. Also, you need another guy while Joel Embiid is hurt right now to make sure you can still get in the playoffs and be comfortable, have some home court advantage, all of that type of stuff. Number two, I'm going with the Dallas Mavericks putting together things very, very, uh, and, and very, very strategic. I'll put it that way. They've been very strategic about everything they've done since Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic. And now I think adding PJ Washington is going to be a huge asset to their team and, and the type of game plan that they run over there. And with the Marky Bucks, they are going to be third right now because they added a point guard who's a veteran and a solid locker room guy. So I'm going to give it up for the Milwaukee Bucks for the third best trade move this deadline here. They already had a stacked team, so it wasn't like they could get that much better. I mean, who else you going to bring? Kevin Durant? So, <laughs> like, they, they couldn't get that much better. So I, I think I'm going to go with that. But I'll put it this way. As far as the Milwaukee Bucks, it does take time to adjust. So I'm trying to allow them that leeway. Y'all know how I feel about Doc Rivers if you've been listening. Clearly, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of Doc Rivers. But look at the Clippers. They struggled early on when they first got James Harden. But now they're in the battle for the first seed in the Western Conference. They've been on a huge game, a huge winning streak. I think they're like 25-4 and four of their last 29 games. They've been killing it. But I say all of that because the Bucs are 1-4 ever since Doc Rivers took over as head coach. And... I'm hoping at some point we start to see a different Milwaukee Bucks like people are hoping to see after firing Adrian Griffin. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it there. But look, we got a side note here. And this side note is a Chicago special. So look, Chicagoans, everybody who's listening and from Chicago, I don't know how many of y'all it is, but I'm going to put it this way. The White Sox, the Chicago White Sox are still looking to relocate right now, but maybe they'll stay in Chicago. If you haven't heard of the latest of the news, the White Sox, they proposed a new stadium in South Loop, and it said that the field will be able to convert into a soccer field for the Chicago Fire soccer team. If the move does take place now, this is needed. I'm loving that the Chicago White Sox are still trying to stay in Chicago and better more. I'm loving that they're still trying to stay somewhat on the south side in South Loop. And I think this is going to be great because it's going to be solid for businesses. Obviously, all the politics when you throw it in there are going to be great for the market over there in South Loop and all of that. It's already a lot of great businesses and stuff going on. But you had a huge venue like that over in the South Loop. Oh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. 
because the layout looks cool already. I don't know if you've seen the pictures, but they do have pictures of it. But it's supposed to be over off the river, like a riverside type of stadium. Um, and it's over by where the Chicago fire happened back in 1871. So it, it looks super cool, but I also I ultimately think that like, this is going to be cool. And don't quote me, don't quote me on the Chicago river part because, or, um, on the just Chicago fire part, because I'm not hundred percent sure <laughs> I'm still learning everything in Chicago, all the, all the new maps and, and different areas and all of that stuff. Some areas I ain't been, so I'll put it that way. But ultimately I think it's going to be dope. I mean, the pictures, they look super cool, bro. It's, it looks like a huge, uh, huge venue, even more in the city and just around more city life. And I would love for, you know, the White Sox to really change an area, kind of how Wrigley is. You know, when you go up to Wrigleyville, is everything is surrounded by the, um, you know, the Cubs stadium and, and everything that's going on. So I'm loving that White Sox may have that opportunity to make something happen in a similar way. Obviously, you know, Cubs have a historic stadium. But, you know, White Sox, they can definitely have something nice over there, too. So I, I'm loving this, and I think it is going to be nice. But, you know, hey, if you heard something you agree with, you disagree with, you like, you dislike, go ahead, shoot me a call, 219-413-9405. We got some news coming up. Also, too, Super Bowl is here. I, I mainly talked about the Super Bowl last episode. So if you, if you came here looking for the Super Bowl stuff, you just got to go listen to, I think it's 115, season two. You got to go back and listen to that episode because that was kind of where I was more so gave my picks. But I, I am going to bring up the Super Bowl a little bit just from a different perspective. Um, but more trades, more um, trades in depth in the news and stuff. So stay tuned. It's halftime. We will be right back. All right, and news for the run. And just so you know, if you hear a bomb like that go off and it's not this sound effect, it's this damn storm that's going on right now because this is it's coming down, boy. It's coming down outside right now. But anyway, look, it's some news for the run. The NBA's trade deadline was today, so trades worth announcing is the only ones I'm going to announce. There was a lot more releases and stuff, but I'm going to just let you know right now. You got to do some of your own research if you want to hear who was released. It was no really big names that was released. The Pistons cleared some cap space, which I'm happy about. We finally got rid of the disease. Killian Hayes, and I say that in the most respectful way. Um, I as a basketball player, a disease. <laughs> but anyway, the Milwaukee Bucks, they've landed Patrick Beverly from the 76ers in exchange for Cam Payne and a second round draft pick. The Indiana Pacers, they've traded for Buddy Heald to the Philadelphia 76ers in return for Marcus Morris and three second round picks. The Dallas Mavericks, they've traded Grant Williams, Seth Curry, and a first-round pick to the Charlotte Hornets for P.J. Washington. The Toronto Raptors, they were trading Dennis Smith or Dennis Schroeder to the Brooklyn Nets for Spencer Dinwiddie. And the Detroit Pistons, we traded Bojan Bogdanovic to the New York Knicks for Evan Fortner, Quentin Grimes, and two second-round picks. Now, there's some more news that happened in the NBA. Today was a very special day, so, you know, if you keep up with anything, or maybe you didn't notice, but today, 2 8 24. Now, I believe this is Kobe Day. 2 8 24. That was his number um, 8 and then 24, which is why it was a significant day. But the Los Angeles Lakers, they revealed Kobe Bryant's statue, and we found out that Kobe Bean Bryant will have three statues outside of Crypto Arena. Now, the first statue was revealed today with him wearing a number 8 jersey, and his wife, Vanessa Bryant, says there will be two more statues in which he'll be wearing the jersey number 24 and another with Kobe and his daughter, Gianna. So, man, I'm loving that the Lakers do this. Lakers have always been, you know, a high class organization. So this is dope to hear. But some general sports news. And this is really the sports news that's like very, very interesting here. And I think this is the sports news that I could have talked about, but I'm going to just say it here. So Netflix, they're going to be producing a docuseries similar to NFL's Hard Knocks, but with the Boston Red Sox in the MLB. Now, this will include unlimited access to players, coaches, executives, all within the organization. And the docuseries is set to go full season and premiere in the season of 2025. So I'm thinking this is going to be dope. But only only concern I have about this docuseries is that the baseball season is a long, long season, bro. It's not like the NFL where it's just like 
17 weeks and then postseason bro baseball season be the whole spring going into the summer like baseball season is a long time so <laughs> i'll put it that way but also too um fox espn warner bros and discovery are joining forces to create a streaming platform for sports now the platform will include just about all sports from college to professional sports but i think this is dope because last time i talked about it i said the nfl just need to bring everything to one channel but i got one up all the sports said you know we're just gonna bring this to one channel instead of trying to go to all these different streaming platforms so i think that's definitely a solid move i'm looking forward to that as well all of these oligarchy companies teaming up it's kind of crazy but I mean, it's about time. I mean, yeah, it's about time we just put all the sports in one place for those people who just want to watch sports. I mean, it only makes sense. Now, Chicago News, the Chicago White Sox have proposed a new stadium in South Loop. It said the field will be converted into a soccer field for the MLS Chicago Fire Team if the team makes this move. All right, now, the Super Bowl Sunday is here. It's taking place this Sunday, February 11th. The San Francisco 49ers will take on the Kansas City Chiefs. And I'm loving that this game is about to happen. But look, I got to ask y'all right now because I know you're probably ready for the game. But here's the thing. Are you ready for just 11 minutes of NFL play this upcoming Super Bowl? Yeah. Did you hear me clearly? I said, are you ready for just 11 minutes of NFL play this upcoming Super Bowl? Now, business writer Joe Pompliano gave us a stat that we didn't know we needed. I'm going to tell you that right now. So he figured out, and, and there was multiple sources, too, that said this as well, and multiple calculations that, that proved this. He figured out that throughout the game, the NFL average is about three hours and 12 minutes whenever you're watching a football game in the NFL. But through the game, there's only 11 minutes of strictly athletic action. Yes, 11 minutes of action that strictly involves athleticism. Other than that, we're just sitting around watching play calls. We're watching the changes. We're watching replays. We're watching commercials. We're watching coaches. We're watching Taylor Swift. We're watching timeouts. We're watching the referees look at a monitor. All of these other things that go on during the NFL game, meaning about 90% of the time we spend watching an NFL game is without athleticism and without athletic action. So I started thinking about this and I'm like, damn, that's actually kind of crazy because it made me think about Taylor Swift and, and <laughs> I'm going to prepare y'all right now because you already know they about to show her heavy during the Super Bowl, whether she on commercials or not. But anyway, it made me think about Taylor Swift because um, a lot of people were combating like oh, the t whole Taylor Swift thing of like they showing her too much. And people were saying, well, they only show Taylor Swift for about 25 seconds in a three hour game that she attends. So, you know, it's not that bad. It's, it's really OK. And, and that's the average 25 seconds. There was news that reported about it. There was pop culture websites that reported about it as well, because I guess they all just got tired of hearing people talk about Taylor Swift being shown in the NFL game. So they really looked at the at the statistics and, and said, OK, it's an average of 25 seconds that Taylor Swift is being shown in the camera. So why are people so upset? But let's keep this in mind because we got a stat here that that kind of brings things into perspective. So let's keep this in mind. The average is sometimes more and sometimes less. But assuming it's more than 25 seconds or exactly 25 seconds, we only get 11 minutes to actually watch action of football, bro. 25 seconds is a big chunk of 11 minutes of athletic action. So, I mean, you break that into to pieces. I don't know the statistics. I'm not a math guru, so I'm not going to sit here and calculate it. I tried. I'm not going to cap to y'all. I actually was, like, thinking about how I could calculate it, but I'm like, I'm taking too much time away from what I'm trying to do. So I'm, I'm going to step away from that. But my whole point of even bringing that up is, like, if I was to shut up and be quiet for 20 seconds, I guarantee you, you would be like, bro, what the hell is going on? You see what I mean? You see what I mean? For a second, you was probably like, bro, I don't know what's going on, but you see what I mean? If I take that type of to the, the 20 seconds out of <laughs> 25 seconds out of a, a I don't know, whatever, man, y'all get what I'm saying. If I take that much time out of 11 minutes, like you're going to remember what happened in that 25 seconds. So you can't sit here and tell me like, oh, well, she's not really being shown a lot, especially when this is happening every game that she attends and on a weekly basis. So it's like, I, 
I want to prepare y'all right now, and that's the only reason I'm talking about Taylor Swift, but I just thought it was very interesting, and I know we're about to see her on plenty of commercials and all kind of stuff, too. Um, hopefully, some of these commercials ain't released yet, because clearly some of these uh, companies don't know what a Super Bowl ad is. You wait until the Super Bowl to do it, but that's another story. The whole, whole reason I even bring that up is because some teams or some commercials in the Super Bowl is already released, and they're like going to air on uh, Super Bowl Sunday, and I'm like, all right, well, we already seen your commercial, so what? What does it matter if you know it airs? Like, why just save yourself seven million dollars and just keep it on social media? Like, it's it's weird to me, but I don't, I don't know. That that that's a whole that's a whole different thing. But ultimately, above all, I'm ready for the Super Bowl, man. I, I'm I'm excited for it. Um, I'm hoping that we still get a good game. I'm hoping some of these commercials is on point as well, because you know this is a big event. And then Usher, boy, we got to give it up for my boy Usher. I could break into a whole nother segment here about Usher, bruh. I mean, Usher's a legend. I'm excited to hear what song he's dropping first, what songs he's going to perform first. You know, Usher come in with the dance moves as well. So I'm excited to watch that, bro. Like, all of these different things outside of the game is going to be interesting, too. But it really blew my mind that we're only really getting 11 minutes of action, of athletic action throughout this game and maybe it's more but you know it's going to be dragged out even longer because this is the super bowl so the game is about to be like four hours instead of three hours and yet we're gonna maybe see 13 minutes of athletic action if that like i, I don't know it just blows my mind but look anyway go ahead shoot me a call man 219-413-9405 i appreciate you for kicking it with me uh, of course man send it to a cousin a brother an, un- an uncle a niece a nephew um there was a couple other things too i said i was gonna say before I got on here, um, so definitely if you if you still listen, I gotta say it now because I mentioned it. But no, bro, I, I was just gonna mention in the very beginning, I got caught up into the introduction and all that. But I was gonna mention like, bro, been going hard in the gym, man. I've been going hard in the gym, my voice cracking. But I'm telling you, man, I've been in there about four or five days a week. I don't know where this is coming from, but it's like random, you know, it's just, it's just be feeling good sometimes, you know, but I don't know. I guess I'm trying to encourage you. I don't know. I really don't give a damn if you go to the gym or not, but, <laughs> but like, I've been, I've been in the gym, bro. I'm telling you, man, I'm feeling good, bro. And, and my family, they be cracking jokes on me. They're like, damn, man, you getting so skinny. Cause they're used to the football me. They're used to me. Like, you know, being a high school, early college of like, you know, playing football and being super stocky and, and, and strong and thick. It, that sounds crazy, but like, no, seriously, bro, I had a lot of meat on my bones. Like, pause, in the weirdest way. I know it sounds crazy, but no, for real, man. But the slim down, toning up, about to come out here looking like Bruce Lee with the muscles in a minute, bro. But, <laughs> no, that's just that's just one of the extra things. It was another thing, too, that happened. I didn't, I, I forgot about it. I meant to write it down. This is why I be trying to say this stuff in the beginning. But I be forgetting, bro. I be forgetting about some of this stuff, man. Um... Man, it was something, but w- whatever. I, I mean, it'll, it'll come back to me um, above all, but I'm excited for Super Bowl Sunday. I'd love to hear what y'all are doing as well, Super Bowl Sunday. I'm going to try and, and get on IG and give like the halftime recap. Actually, maybe not because Usher going to be performing, but I'm definitely going to get the post-game recap. In the post-game recap, I'm going to go live and all of that stuff. So go ahead, tap in with me on Instagram at The Run Podcast. You can follow my personal as well at I am Manny Wilson. Oh, that's what it was. That's what it was. Of course, I started thinking about it as soon as I was literally about to wrap up. Um, uh, the week of next week, I'm going to be gone, man. I'm going to be in Toronto. So y'all going to get a recap episode. Um, I'm going to be out of here in Toronto. Me and the bull, we going to Toronto, man. Uh, super excited for it. Just, the, you know, vacation. Ain't really got nothing to do with Valentine's Day. We just like traveling. But super excited about that. Um, but that was my last thing. And that was the thing I meant to mention earlier in the episode. But sometimes I don't be wanting to mention it in the beginning of the episode. Because the way my mind works, knowing I got ADHD, bro. <laughs> My mind's going to go everywhere, and I'm going to forget the first talking point of what I was going to say. I'm going to forget the introduction of how I wanted to bring in the episode and all of that different stuff. <laughs> all that different stuff, bro. That's just the, that's the way my mind is. But I guess it's the end of the episode, and I, I figured I was going to be talking a lot today. Just had that type of feeling. But um, if, if you've been listening to, to the, for the rest of this part, bro, hey, I'll rock with you heavy, man. Round of applause for you. If you've been kicking it with me through this part, I rock with you. I rock with you. You family. You family at this point. <laughs> I don't know how many of y'all gonna actually listen to this part, but definitely family. All right, I'm done. I'm done. That's 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 it. 
that's all I had. Those are the last of my personal updates. I'll be trying to make sure I give y'all some sort of personal updates too, because if you're going to spend time with me, I at least want to let you know what's going on, um, everything else that's been going on. But um, other than that, that's all I got for y'all, man. I appreciate you for tuning in, especially if you've been hanging with me to the very, very end. I promise I'm actually about to wrap up. But until then, man, we'll be back later on next week. We'll uh, probably Monday, Tuesday. And then... Yeah, next week we'll have a recap episode or, or a replay episode because I'll be gone. But other than that, man, I will see y'all later on next week. Hope you have a great Super Bowl Sunday. Them Kansas City Chiefs is going to win. And until then, I will be back later on next week and so on and so on and so on.